Good afternoon, Mike Licio here with you for a doubleheader, midweek doubleheader between the Flagler Saints and the St. Leo Lions. The Lions come in 13th in the country, the Saints on a little bit of a slide, they've dropped eight straight. Starting lineup for the Lions, Alexandra Hare leads off at third. Bailey Williams bats second in left field. Brianna Neal is the second baseman. She'll bat third. Cleaning up in right, Bianca Palestina. Batting fifth, the first baseman, Alyssa Perez. Hope Epps bats sixth in center field. Cheyenne Waller is the shortstop, batting seventh. Madison Coe is the catcher, batting eighth. Caroline Barwick, the designated player, bats ninth. The pitcher today for St. Leo will be Kayla Betts. In the circle for the Saints, Jordan Sheets, 6-8 and eight with a 326 ERA, making her 15th start, her 19th appearance. She struck out 37 and 82, 83 and two-thirds. Little bit of a delay, there was a bad accident on I-95, which delayed the umpires. Um, drive safely out there this holiday weekend. Um, was coming home from another game last night, and there was an accident there as well. So that one skipped in for ball one, and we are underway here at Flagler Field. St. Leo from Dade City, over on the Gulf Coast. As that's fouled off by Alexandra Hare, who's hitting 395 with no home runs, 24 RBI. Hare comes in with a seven game hitting streak. Drops a bunt, sheets up with it over to Parker, one away. Bailey Williams, 3.30 on the year, no home runs, 10 RBI. That is chopped to O'Connor over the Parker in time, two away. Now batting, second baseman, number eight, Brianna Neal. Brianna Neal, 385, that's second on the team. Two home runs, the only player to hit a home run for St. Leo this year. 23 RBI, which is second on the team. As she steals. Right down St. George Street for a strike. Madison Vogel behind the plate, Olivia Parker at first, Cassidy Crump at second, Abby O'Connor the shortstop, Mackenzie Smith at third, Jordan Sheets in the circle. Outside, one and one. Paige Maceda in left, Jordan Moss in center. Trinity Fry is your right fielder. Outside, two and one. To Neil. Catches the corner there, nice frame by Vogel. It's two and two. St. Leo, 33 and six on the season, 15 and three in Sunshine State Conference play. They're two games behind Tampa in second place. Count is full, Bianca Palestina on deck. Saints, 12 and 23 on the season, seven and 11 in Peach Bell play. They're tied with Aiken for sixth. Top eight teams make it. They're one game ahead of Young Harris, as that's grounded foul. First of five games this week for the Saints. As that is a walk. 
to Neal. Now batting right fielder number 11. Bianca Polistina. Bianca Polistina. No home runs, 18 RBI, sitting 353. That just misses for a ball. Neil at first. 12 stolen bases, only been caught once. Sheets drops that in and it's one and one. Aaron Kinberger is the St. Leo coach. Just a few wins away from 400 for her career. As that is ripped to Smith, she knocks it down. Over the first stretch by Parker, but not in time. And with two out, there's two on for the Lions. First base, number 18, Alyssa Perez. And that is a hit. Alyssa Perez, 333, no home runs, 14 RBI. As Catherine Grant goes out to have a word with her freshman pitcher. Catherine Grant in her sixth season with the Saints, 128 up, 128 down. been a tough year for the Saints, really. They ended last year on a seven game losing streak. This is their second losing streak of at least seven games this season. A young team in transition going through some growing pains. Let's reset it. A ground in the third for Perez over the first in time, and the side is retired. Lions get two. They strand them on the bases. Scoreless through a half. Saints starting lineup, Paige Messina making her 150th consecutive appearance. Leads off in left field. Abby O'Connor bats second at short. Cassidy Crump is the second baseman batting third. Olivia Parker cleans up at first. Mackenzie Smith bats fifth at third base. Trinity Fry is the right fielder batting sixth. Courtney Robinson, the designated player, bats seventh. Jordan Moss in center batting eighth and batting ninth to catcher Madison Vogel. As you already know, today's pitcher is Jordan Sheets for the Saints. Her counterpart in the circle, Kayla Betts, 17 and one. 4.41 ERA. This is her 23rd appearance of the season, her 16th start. This is not, this is not made up. 15 complete games, 12 shutouts on the season. Kayla, one of the best pitchers in the nation. As Maceda steps in and takes a strike. Maceda hitting 291, four home runs, 12 RBI. Upstairs, one and one. Maceda was 
one of the few bright spots in a sweep by Columbus State this past weekend. Had a home run, went three for 10 in the series. Saints were actually no hit by the Shohei Otani of the Peach Bell Conference, Hannah Rose Corbin, on Saturday. Not only is Hannah Rose one of the leading pitchers in the conference, she's one of the best hitters, too. As Messina spoils that one, it's two and two. Saints tie with Aiken for sixth place. Two games behind Georgia College for fifth. Just one ahead of Young Harris for that eighth spot. That would give him a spot in the Peach Bell Tournament. It's fouled off again. <laughs> Kayla bets 191 strikeouts in 120 innings. Just 18 walks. Just seven runs allowed the entire season. Gets Messina to chase, and that's strikeout 192 on the season for Betts, and there's one away. Abby O'Connor, 274, three home runs, 31 RBI. Excuse me, three home runs, no home runs, three RBI. Lions playing her in as Betts deals, and that's fouled off the net. For me, this is a week I'm calling the busiest week ever. Saints have five games. I've got three high school baseball games. Fortunately, for the people listening Saturday, I probably won't have a voice left. They'll really appreciate it, probably, as the Lander Bearcats come to town. And that's a strike, it's 0-2. Madison Coe behind the plate. Alyssa Perez at first. Brianna Neal at second. Cheyenne Waller is the shortstop at third base. Alexandria Hare. Bailey Williams in left. Hope Epps in center. Bianca Polistina in right. As Kayla bets the pitcher deals. O'Connor gets a piece of it. St. Leo is a Catholic school. By way of coincidence, um, today at the Cathedral Basilica, they had the um, Bishop's Blessing of the Chrism Mass, and my kids were picked to carry one of the bottles of oil that was blessed. So, bookending my day with Catholicism, as it's a strike over the first to finish the out, and there's two away. Two, three on the putout. Strikeout number two for bets. Catherine Grant wants to know what the delay was. O'Connor didn't know it was a drop third strike, she contends. So there's two out as Cassidy Crump comes up. Crump 309, two home runs, 18 RBI. Leads the team in batting average and RBI. Cassidy Crump, my Crump was two for eight in the Columbus State Series. No balls, one strike, two out to the third hitter of the sitting, Cassidy Crump. Lions eight and one on the road. Saints ten and ten at home. Doesn't get the call there. It's one and one. One one pitch. 
That's grounded up the middle. That's a base hit for Cassidy Crump, and it's a two-out single. And a three-game hitting streak for Cassidy Crump. So Olivia Parker comes up. 204, one home run, 13 RBI. That one off the corner. No, that one was a strike. Still feeling out the strike zone early. Parker fouls that back. St. Leo, the second team in the nation in ERA with just a 102 ERA. Only Concordia University Irvine ahead of them as far as pitching. That's a strike and the side is retired. So three strikeouts and a crump single. We're scoreless through one. Top of the second, Epps, Waller, and Co. come up this inning for the Lions. Mentioned that they are the second pitching team in the nation in ERA. They're also 42nd in hitting out of 277 teams. Epps, 316. No home runs, nine RBI. Lays a bunt that just dies in front of the plate. And that's an easy infield single for Epps. That was a textbook bunt right there, deadening the ball. And Epps has a single. And now has a three game hitting streak. Epps hitting 400 over her last 10 games. 316, a very good batting average, actually last among players who have enough bats to qualify. Just tells you how well the Lions have been hitting. As that's a bunt foul by Cheyenne Waller. Waller, 321, no home runs, 11 RBI. Epps, 10 for 11, stolen base opportunity. She's at first with no one out. That's a ball. And it's one and one. One thing about this Saints team, they don't play around with the schedule. They've always got tough non-conference opponents. 
whether it's Tampa, St. Leo, West Florida, Valdosta. They challenged themselves as that's rolled to Parker over to first. Crump has it. Waller does her job there. She's out at first, three, four on the sacrifice. Epps goes to second. Madison Coe, 320. No home runs, 18 RBIs on the season. A lot of left-handed bats in this St. Leo lineup. So there's probably a correlation between that and the lack of power numbers, because usually you're just looking for your left-handed hitters to put it in play, which they do very well. Sheets low and away, big lead at second, and getting back is Epps. Saints were swept by Georgia Southwestern, swept by Rollins, and swept by Columbus State in their last three series. As that is a fly ball that drops in just in front of Paige Maceda. And just getting in the third on that one was Epps. Good heads up running by Epps, though, because she had to wait to the last minute to see if Maceda was going to catch that. Caroline Barwick. So now with one out, there's runners at the corners. as Caroline Barwick comes up. Barwick, 314, no home runs, three RBI. Erin Kinberger, Berger, excuse me, getting her base runners and hitters set. As Yogi Berra once said, there are no trick plays. One of the more lucid thoughts Yogi Berra had. So there's going to be a courtesy runner for the catcher. That's Nicole Magdis from Tinley Park, Illinois, from Providence Catholic High School. The runners at the corners with one out for the Lions as Barwick steps in. Shows bunt. Was not able to pull back, but taking second is Magnus. So now both runners in scoring position. Epps at third, Magnus at second. Barwick at the plate as Jordan Sheet steals. Chop back up the middle, O'Connor gets through for a base hit. Big turn at third and getting back is Magnus. It's an RBI single and the Lions lead one to nothing. Barwick's fourth RBI of the season. For Hope Epps, her 20th run scored. Number two, Nicole Magnus. And so it's one to nothing. Runners at the corners. We get back to the top of the order with Alexandra Hare. From Trinity, Florida, went to J.W. Mitchell High School. After that, she went to Florida Southwestern State. If you're wondering why Mitchell High School sounds familiar, it's where former St. Anna Dumovic went. Wouldn't be surprised if we see Anna out here at some point tonight as Hare takes strike one and moving to second is Barwick. So second and third with one out. That is a base hit. And an RBI single for Hare who takes a huge turn at first base and gets back. 
trying to bait Smith into a throw that might release the runner at third. Left fielder, number one, Bailey Williams. So here now with an eighth game hitting streak, she's hitting 480 during that eight game hitting streak. Gets her 25th RBI of the season. That leads the team. And it's two to nothing. St. Leo as Catherine Grant goes out to talk to Jordan Sheets. St. Leo is not one of those teams that's going to lay back and hit the long ball, obviously, but they do a great job of generating runs with timely hitting and good base running, and that's what we've seen this inning. Action in the Saints' bullpen. I'm too short to see who, though. Billy Williams from Newport Ritchie, went to Mitchell High School, as well. She's a fifth year senior. That's a strike, throw to second, cut off by O'Connor, back to the plate and she's out. So two, six, two. And Magnus is caught stealing. Excuse me, Magnus scored. I think that was Barwick. Let's keep up with our scorecord. So Magnus scored, and Barwick is caught at the plate. Two, six, two, caught stealing. And there's two away. Getting the third on the throw was Hare. And now there's some discussion. Throw was not going to get the runner. O'Connor cut it off and threw it back to the plate to negate the lead runner on the double steal. Pitch was a ball. So it's 1 0. Now 2 0. As Hare is at third with two out. So the count is actually one and one. Umpire, a little confusion there. So it's one and one. As the umpires confer. Bunted out in front of the plate. Sheets not able to scoop it. I think that's going to be an RBI single in the scorebook as the world's worst scorer continues to try to figure out scoring plays. No matter, Hare scores. It's three to nothing. Second base, number eight, Brandon Neal. For Williams, her 11th RBI of the season. And that is fouled off by Brianna Neal. Neal from Sanford went to Lyman High School. Where she was a former Greyhound. If you ever in Sanford, everybody recommends a restaurant called Hollenbach's. My friend, best friend in high school lives there, been trying to get me to go for years. Then my aunt told me how good it was, and I said, okay, well, I'll, I trust you. <laughs> it's 0-2 to Neil. That is a grounder to O'Connor. She steps on the bag, and the side is retired. But five hits generate three runs for the Lions. An inning and a half complete, they lead three to nothing.
Bottom of the second, Saints will send five, six, and seven up. Mackenzie Smith, Trinity Fry, and Courtney Robinson. Mackenzie Smith hitting 348 over her last 10 games, was three for seven in the Columbus State Series for the season, hitting 270 with five home runs and 13 RBIs. Mackenzie's starting to recapture that form she had in 2021 before a season-ending injury early in 2022. Leads the team with five home runs. Kayla Betts, the pitcher from Leesburg, Florida, went to Eustis High School over in Lake County. Putting a zero on the board in the first, something she's done quite a bit. In fact, she's only given up a run in three starts this season. Gets Smith to chase upstairs. And there's two away. Flying solo today, my partner Maddie Torres had class. Being a more mature, responsible person, unlike me, who skipped work today. Big cut, chasing upstairs again. And there's one away. All four out so far for Betts by strikeout. Now right fielder, number six, Trinity Fry. Trinity Fry, 221, three home runs, 15 RBI on the season. Big cut there. It's 0 and 1. Bet's going right at her. So it's talking about earlier the Saints play a lot of Sunshine State Conference foes. That's in for a strike. So in two. Three straight 0 oh 2 counts for bets here. Geography makes it very convenient for the Sunshine State Conference and for Flagler to play these non conference games. But it's a tough conference from top to bottom. Didn't get the call there, just misses. It's one and two. Local tie, St. Leo actually offers a degree program to St. John's River State College here in St. Augustine. Five strikeouts for Betts. And that brings up Courtney Robinson, the designated player. Courtney, 237 on the year, no home runs, four RBI. I had my sweeps confused. It wasn't Georgia Southwestern that swept the Saints two weekends ago. It was North Georgia. Georgia Southwestern swept them earlier in the season. No balls, one strike, two out to the third hitter of this inning, Courtney Robinson. That one upstairs, one and one. Swung on and missed. <laughs> One two pitch. Just darts away. 
Good eye by Robinson not to chase that one. Two balls, two strikes, two out. Fouled off. And we'll do it again. And that's ball three, the first three ball count for bets today. Jordan Moss comes up should the inning continue. Seventh pitch of the at bat, popped up. First out by Betts, that wasn't a strikeout. She's retired four in a row. Lions lead three to nothing as we go to the top of the third. Jordan Sheets from River Ridge High School in Newport Ritchie continues in the circle. Bianca Polistina, Alyssa Perez, Hope Epps do up this inning for the Lions. Polistina from Cooper City, went to Cooper City High School. She's a freshman who singled the first hit of the ball game her first time up. Right down St. George Street for strike one to start the third. Sheets six and eight, but she's showing the makings of a big game pitcher. Cause that just misses. But she is she is a pitcher who pitches to contact and Defensively, the Saints have struggled. They are in the bottom 40 in the country in defense. As Crump feels that with ease to make the announcer <laughs> look like he's foolish. Happy to do so, it's one away. Now batting, first base, number 18, Alyssa Perez. Alyssa Perez from Sebring High School. Transferred from South Florida State. Went to Sebring High School in Sebring, Florida. My good friend Trent Ferguson, who does some radio work with me, is from Sebring. Because that's a swing and a miss. Trent left Sebring to go pursue a graduate degree at South Florida is that's a strike in its own too. Polistina with a three game hitting streak came in hitting 538 over her last eight games. That one a little too far outside, it's one and two. Uh, 
Sheet steals. Line base hit to left field. Palestina continues to tear to cover off the ball. Excuse me, Perez continues to tear to cover off the ball. Now she's hitting 333 on the season. Hope Epps singled and scored her first time up. Hope from just up the road in Callahan as that's chopped to Crump over to Parker in time. Two away. Now batting. Shortstop, number 33, Cheyenne Waller. Cheyenne Waller from Inverness. Went to Citrus High School. Gave herself up. Her first time up. In for a strike. No balls, one strike, two out here in the third. There's a runner at second, that's Alyssa Perez. She runs on the pitch to flare to left field. Macedo runs it down and the side is retired. One hit for the Lions who strand one. We go to the bottom of the third, they lead three to nothing. Kayla Betts in her third inning of work for the Lions. Now batting. Has thrown 40, 24 consecutive shutout innings. She'll face Moss, Vogel, and Maceda. 8-9-1 for the Saints. Jordan Moss, 149 on the season, a home run, seven RBI. Waves and misses is that one. Betts continues to work ahead in the count. That one just inside, one and one. One and two. Popped up. Oh, that one was too close for comfort. Y'all know how I love my pop flies. So what into the moss? You know I got the last two. You got it, Bob. You got it. 
right down the middle. Strikeout number six for Betts, and there's one away. Madison Vogel. One for 16 on the season with an RBI. Cuts and misses on that one. and two. Betts rocks back when she throws. I don't think I've seen that before, but you know what? It's working out fine for her. She struck out seven of the nine batters she's faced. As we go back to the top of the order, the former Sun Lake Seahawk, Paige Maceda, struck out her first time up. Maceda tied the school record for doubles last season with 15. Cuts and misses on that one. No balls, one strike, two out here in the third. Betts rocks back and delivers another strike. She's had just one three ball count and just two two ball counts today. She deals, just misses on the inside corner, one and two. It's a good miss by Betts, though. <laughs> Tough pitch for Mercedes to lay off, but she does. Blows that one by her. Seven straight retired for Betts. She struck out the side twice already today. Three innings complete. St. Leo's lead is three. It's three to nothing. Stephanie Youngblood is going to take over in center field. Now batting, captain number 14, Madison Coe. Jordan Sheets continues in the circle. She'll face Coe. And then Barwick into the top of the order with Hare. 
Co from Bethlehem, Georgia, went to Appalachie High School. Takes a strike there. Co singled. And Nicole Magnus scored for her. First time up. That's a grounder deep in the hole for O'Connor. Over the first in time. And there's one away. Now batting designated player number 10, Caroline Barwick. Caroline Barwick, the sophomore from Crawfordville, Wakulla High School down in the panhandle. Had an RBI single the first time up, was thrown out trying to steal home. Nice pitch on the inside corner by Sheets for strike one. That's ripped foul. And it's 0-2. And that is a base hit over Mackenzie Smith's head. And it's a one out single. Barwick has her second hit of the day. Now battle, third base, number three, Alexandra Hare. Alexandra Hare, one for two. Extended her hitting streak to eight games. Takes one on the inside corner for a strike. Hare the runner at first. Excuse me, not Hare. Barwick's the runner at first. Hare's the runner, the batter at the plate. High in the second and stealing it is Barwick. She's now 10 for 10 on stolen base attempts this season. for a strike, it's one and two. <laughs> That's Rip Foul. Trying to look up what the single game record for strikeouts is for St. Leo, but it's not anywhere, it doesn't look like it's anywhere that's readily accessible. Is that grounded to Parker? She steps on the bag. And there's two away. Barwick moves to third. As Bailey Williams comes up for the third time today. Grounded the short her first time up, had an RBI single her second time up. <laughs> Williams over her last six games. Hitting 429. Barwick the runner at third. Gets a piece of that one, it's one and one.
That one low and away, two and one. Vogel looks to run her back. Line drive in the left field, it's gonna drop in. It's another RBI single for Williams, her second of the game. Lions lead four to nothing. Run scored for Barwick. That's her ninth of the season. Throw to second, not in time. A stolen base for Williams. Neal, grounded into a fielder's choice for last time, up walked in the first. Grounded to second, tough hop for Crump, she fields it in time and the side is retired. Lions add one more though. We're halfway home. They lead four to nothing. Bottom of the fourth, O'Connor, Crump, Parker do up this inning against Kayla Betts. 25 consecutive scoreless innings, including three in this one. She's retired eight of the nine batters by strikeout, and just for good measure, the one she didn't was a pop out that she caught. O'Connor struck out her first time up. Transferred from College of Central Florida. Before that, she was an Oxford Area High Hornet in Oxford, Pennsylvania. That's fouled off, it's one and one. Betts rocks back, skips that in, two and one. I believe that's only the second time she's been behind in the count today. O'Connor fouls it off, it's two and two. Two balls, two strikes to number two, Abby O'Connor. Oh 
O'Connor lettered in softball and basketball in high school. Popped up. And for the first time today, someone else gets to make it out. It's Cheyenne Waller. And there's one away. Cassidy Crump, the lone saint hit today. She's one for one. Attended FIU and Indian River State, but before that was a Coral Springs Charter Panther. Bets over to first in time. There's two away. So Bets with eight strikeouts. A put out and an assist in the 11 Saints outs. Olivia Parker from First Day Presbyterian School in Perry, Georgia. Struck out her first time up. Takes a strike there. No balls, one strike, two out. To the third hitter here in the fourth, Olivia Parker. Popped up. Perez squeezes it, and the side is retired. Betts is retired, ten in a row, four innings complete. Lions lead, four to nothing. A three-run second, but other than that, Jordan Sheets has pitched pretty well today. She'll face Paula Stina, Perez, and Epps this inning. Paula Stina fouls that off. She's one for two today. Extended her hitting streak to three games. During that hitting streak, she is five for eight. One and one. Just off the corner, two and one. Stina takes that one down and in three and one. Alyssa Perez on deck. Oh 
That one high at the letters, ball four. Second walk of the day issued by Sheets. And that'll bring up Alyssa Perez. Perez one for two. Singled her last time up. She'd been hitless in her previous seven at bats. Pitch is a ball, I believe. Tag is not in time. That's a stolen base. For Polistina, her third stolen base of the year. It's one and oh. That's a chopper, sky high to Smith, checks the runner back to second. So it's a fielder's choice that Perez will reach on, and it's first and second. The old Baltimore chop. Look it up, children, adults, everybody, because probably nobody under the age of 70 knows what a Baltimore chop is. But that's was a hitting strategy in baseball in the turn of the 20th century where you just chop them all down and pop it up sky high and then run it out. Bunted foul for Hope Epps, who's one for two. Polistina at second, Perez at first. Skips in, nice block by Vogel, it's one and one. St. Leo dug out singing Country Roads, which was stuck in my head yesterday, actually. It's a banger. One, one pitch. That one drops a little too soon, it's two and one. Rachel Hester heads to the Saints bullpen. Bunted back and foul. That's two and two. And the runners will go back to their respective bases. And Epps will come back for at least one more pitch. It's two and two with two on. 22, Jordan Sheets in the circle. Hope Epps, Hope Epps at the plate, Palestina at second, Perez at first. That is a ground ball up the middle. Crump flips so Connor gets the runner at second. So Epps reaches on a fielder's choice, Palestina to third. Perez is out 4-6 at second. And there's one away for Cheyenne Waller. Sacrificed in the second, flew out to left in the third. Came in hitting 400 over her last four games. Umpire dust off half of home plate. Pitch is a strike, throw in the second, and O'Connor cuts it off. This time, the runner at third stays. It's a stolen base for Epps. So Paulistina at third, Perez 
excuse me, that's Epps at second. Perez was gunned down just off the corner, one and one. One ball, one strike, one out. Drops in, gets the call. One and two. One, two pitch, lined up the middle. <laughs> Epps had to get away, out of the way for that one. Taking second on the throw, it's an RBI single for Waller. And it's five to nothing. Now batting, captain number 14, Madison Cone. Paulistina scores. Epps to third. Waller to second. The catcher, Co comes up. She's one for two. Fly ball to center field to the track. It's over the head of Youngblood. That's going to be a double. Coming in to score was one runner out at the plate is the next runner. So that is an RBI double for Co. Up scores. Waller is out at the plate. And there's two away, but it's six to nothing. Barwick two for two. An RBI single and a stolen base. Pitch is a strike. No balls. One strike. Two out. Co is the runner on second. Runs that foul. And it's 0 and 2. Co gave that ball a ride. O2 pitch from Sheets. Off the foot of Barwick, she stays alive. Fortieth game of the season for the Lions. They've won 33 of them. Off the end of the bat. Smith picks it up, foul. Eighty three degrees here in St. Augustine, a sunny day. Waving to my friend Tabitha Foreman. Flagler softball alum. That is rolled to O'Connor. Over to first in time. And the side is retired. But the Lions add two more. We go to the bottom of the fifth. They lead six to nothing.
Kayla Betts so far this game doing what she'd done her last four starts and putting zeros on the board. 26 straight scoreless innings. Last inning was the first inning without a strike out for her, but she struck out eight. Smith, Fry, and Robinson up this inning. She's retired 10 in a row. Mackenzie, Spr uh, Mackenzie Smith from Tarpon Springs. Went to Tarpon Springs Senior High School. That one up and in for a ball. Only the third time Betts has been behind in the count today. And the first four innings, only two two ball counts and one three ball count. That one darts away from the bat of Smith. It's one and one. Smith was four-time all Pinellas County. Peach Belt Player of the Week. Two years ago next week, as that's fouled out of play. One and two for Betts, who's been on the Sunshine State Conference honor roll. Strikeout number nine. And there's one away. Trinity Fry from Beloit Turner. High school in Beloit, Wisconsin. All tournament player at Rock Valley College before coming to St. Augustine. Rock Valley College just over the Illinois border. That one high, one and oh. One oh pitch fouled out of play off the oh <laughs> ricocheted off the light tower and into the Lions dugout. So one ball, one strike, one out. Fry was a four thirty seven hitter in Juco. Buzzes the tower, it's two and one. Blows that fire, it's two and two. Two pitch popped up. And Betts continues to stay involved in outs. Saints have made 14 outs. She's either struck out, caught, or assisted on 12 of them. As Robinson comes up, she popped out to Betts her first time up.
Fly ball, left field. That's gonna get out of play. Eight games in seven, eight games in six days for the Saints. No, seven days, I gotta do my math. Seven days, three against Columbus State, two against St. Leo, three against Lander Friday and Saturday. Seven game homestand, they'll have Florida Southern here next Tuesday. Catches the corner, it's 0-2 to Robinson. runs it down and the side is retired 13 in a row retired for bets five innings complete lions lead six to nothing comes into the game. Her 71st career appearance moves her ahead of Kelly Riddick and Kristen Chapman in school history. She's currently seventh in innings pitched, ninth all time in wins, fifth in shutouts. This year, one and five with a 4.34 ERA. This is her 14th appearance, her 10th out of the bullpen. 39 strikeouts and 48 and a third. She'll face the top of the order, Hare, Williams, and Neal. As that's a ball. Jordan Sheets day is done. Five innings pitched, six runs on 11 hits. No strikeouts and two walks. She is the pitcher of record. That's rolled to Smith. Backhand over to first, not in time. And Hare has her second hit of the day. And the Lions have the leadoff runner on. Bailey Williams is two for three with two RBI singles and a stolen base. Came in hitting 415. over her last five games. Nice pitch from Maddie Wise on the corner for a strike. Maddie from Edgefield, South Carolina, went to Strom Thurmond High School. Where she swam and pitched for the Rebels. That one high, one and one. Runner gets back, that's Hare at first. First of two here, we got a late start. Um, bad accident on 95, held up the umpire, so we started about 50 minutes later than expected. Cut on and missed, it's one and two. Maddie Wise is also fourth all time in complete games, sixth in strikeouts in school history, sixth in games started. 
71 games pitched. Next up, the former Southpaw, Ali Marcano, with 74. Ali Marcano now working for the Buffalo Bisons. Triple A baseball. Ali was here my first season way back in 2018. Seems like a lifetime ago. Hair at first, the sheets, excuse me, that's wise, dealing, chop foul. off. Vogel's going to walk that one off. They're going to confer. It looked like a bunt and there was two strikes and it was a foul ball. So if it's ruled a bunt, that would be strike three. So no signal from the umpire yet. So as of right now, it's still one and two. Nope. It is called a foul bunt, which counts as a strikeout for Wise. Now batting, second base, number eight. Number 224 in her career. She now trails Donna Manafo for fifth place by 31. Maddie, one of nine pitchers in Saints history to reach the 20 win mark. In the, on the inside corner for a strike to Neal. In all likelihood, Neal's last chance to extend her two game hitting streak. Walked in the first, reached on a fielder's choice in the second or hit into a fielder's choice. The inning ended and grounded the second her last time up. Hare stole her second base of the game. That's rip foul. Hare now with eight stolen bases on the season. Side one and two. Two and two. Not a lot of bio information on the um, St. Leo website, so not really able to enthrall you with some of the accomplishments of the other team, so I apologize for that. Just off the corner, the count is full. The fourth hitter in the order, Palestina on deck with three balls, two strikes, and one out. No runs across in this inning. Off the hands, that's going to get off and land on the top of the dugout. Heads up, Dad. <laughs> oh, there's a dad trying to field it off the dugout and lost track of it for a second. Seventh pitch of the at bat here. As Neil continues to battle at the plate, Hare at second. The inside corner down looking. Great pitch by Maddie Wise, and there's two away. Now batting right field, number 11, Bianca Polistina. 
If I've said it once, I've said it a thousand times, or at least 225, because that's how many strikeouts she has in her career. That's Maddie's spot on the inside corner. It gets that late movement that freezes hitters. As that's grounded by policy, the flip over by Crump, and the side is retired. We go to the bottom of the sixth, Saints trail by six, here on the Peach Belt Sports Network. Kendall Crean will move to first base from East Lake High School in Tarpon Springs for the Lions. Kayla Betts has started every game, finished every game she started. Starts Stephanie Youngblood off with a strike there. Youngblood. 0 for 4 on the season from Jones County High School in Gray, Georgia. And it's one and one. As far as I know, that's the only defensive change is Crean at first. That's a roller to short. Waller up with it, not in time, and then Ephany Youngblood with her first college hit. It's an infield single. Congratulations, Stephanie. We have a pinch hitter. It's going to be Alex Vitola, the former Ocean City Raider from Ocean City, New Jersey. Alex had a hit against Columbus State. One of the few the Saints had this past weekend. She's one for six on the season. Young blood at first. Pitches a ball. Betts had retired 13 in a row before that young blood single. Big cut, Youngblood in the second with a stolen base. Her third of the season. And it's one and one to number one, Alex Vitola.
helped Ocean City to the South Jersey sectional semifinals. Chases that one upstairs. It's one and two. Chases the high heat. That's strikeout number 10 for Betts. And there's one away. Brings up Maceda, who's 0 for 2 with two strikeouts. Betts looking for her nation leading 13 shutout. Did she hit that? So that is an infield single for Maceda. And there's runners at the corners with one out. Maceda did a good job not to interfere with that one. Page is now hit in three consecutive games. As Abby O'Connor comes up, struck out in the first, popped a short in the fourth. And that's fouled off. Through six innings, Betts has only gotten into one three ball count. Not a surprise, she's only walked 18 in 120 innings. Got her 200th strikeout of the season last inning. And it's 0-2. To number two, Abby O'Connor, Paige Maceda at first. <laughs> Fouled off. A specialty of O'Connor. The 0-2 pitch. Betts rocks back. O'Connor spoils another one. Maceda at first. Youngblood's at third. Betts in the circle. O'Connor in the batter's box. One and two. O'Connor saw four pitches in her first at bat, five in her second at bat. This will be the sixth pitch she's seen in this one. That's what Abby does. She works the pitchers. And gets the count back to two and two. Two balls, two strikes to number two. Abby O'Connor with two on. First of two today.
2-2 pitch, O'Connor fouls another one off. O'Connor, only a freshman and able to do this. Made the comparison before. By her junior year, Garland Evans was the same kind of hitter as it's three and two. Garland Evans was the same kind of hitter and by her junior year, one of the hardest hitters to strike out in the country. The ninth pitch of the at bat, three balls, two strikes, one out. Cassidy Crump on deck, Youngblood at third, Maceda at first. Betts in the circle, rocking back. Fires to O'Connor, chopped, foul. I gotta go back and look in the way back machine. Let's go back. Abby O'Connor had a 12 minute pitch at bat earlier in the season. That's a grounder over the first in time. Neil tried to get the tag. The Saints get one on the board. And for just the fourth time this season, Betts is allowed to run in one of her starts. So that is an RBI for O'Connor. Now batting. Second baseman, number 33, Cassidy Crow. Young Blood scores, and it's six to one. Crump, one for two, was the only player to get a hit the first five innings of the game. Takes a ball there. That's had 12 shutouts in their first 15 starts. Chases the high heat there, it's one and one. To put in the context, the kind of season Betts has had, this is a bad start for her. And she's been absolutely dominant in it, but statistically speaking, that's down and in. Nice snag there by Coe. This is a less than average day for her. And all she's done is given up three hits and struck out 10. That's why she's in the National Pitcher of the Year conversation. Coach Kinberger, gonna go out there and settle her down. More strategery. Saints trying to climb back from a six-run deficit here in the late innings. <laughs> Cassidy Crump was a two-time state champion in high school. Let's reset. Mercedes on second. Crump is at the plate. She's ahead in the count, two and one with two out. Kayla Betts in the circle. That snapped, by the way, a 27 and a third inning scoreless streak for Betts. And it's two and two. First run, Betts is allowed in six games. Two, two. Two, two. 
two balls, two strikes, two out. That's Rock's back. Crump hits it the other way to Neal. Had some trouble with it, but corrals it, and the side is retired. Saints get one back. They go to the top of the seventh, trailing six to one. Mike Licio here with you at Flagler Field in the top of the seventh. Saints trail six to one. Maddie Wise back to work for her second inning. She struck out two in her first. She'll face Crean, Epps, and Waller. Kendall Crean coming up for the first time in this game. 152 on the season, no home runs, four RBI. That one just high at the letters. <laughs> Gets a strike there, one and one. Two and one. Green doesn't wear batting gloves, as that is a nice pitch on the inside corner by Wise, and it's two and two. I was talking about a former Saint last night in the high school game I was Talking about how Maria Capos, much like the legendary Harmon Killebrew, did not wear gloves. That's grounded to Smith. Not able to scoop it. And Crean reaches. See what they score that. One for three today, two runs and a stolen base. She reached on a fielder's choice the last time up. That's grounded to Smith. Over to second, gets the runner there. So after an E5, she makes up for it, getting Green at second, 5-4 on a put out. And for the second time today, Epps reaches on a fielder's choice. Saints come in 233rd in the nation in defense. Another error today. They made 65 errors in 36 games. Waller one for three at an RBI single her first time up. That's why when I think if you're grading the young pitchers this year, the grade has to be an incomplete because 
even on the earned runs, there's so many extra opportunities given because of the defensive miscues that it's hard to fairly just, judge them. Vogel digs that one out, but it's a stolen base for Epps, her second of the game. Counts 2-0. Six stolen bases today is a 3-0. and oh. And Coe's on deck. Six stolen bases for St. Leo. Only 58 in the first 39 games. So they're not really a super heavy running team. Averaging about one and a half a game coming in today. They've quadrupled that so far in game one. 3-0, can't get the call there. It's a four-pitch walk. First one issued today by Wise. And it makes it first and second for Madison Coe, who's two for three. Singled in the second. Hit a double off the wall in the fifth. And Catherine Grant going out to the circle. Normally you get about a 30 to 35 minute break between games with the umpires arriving late. I don't know if we'll see that here. But we do have one more after this. So Madison Coe's at the plate. Hope Epps is at second. Cheyenne Waller's at first. Madeline Wise in the circle. And that hits her. Maddie's done a lot of that in her career because she likes to pitch on the inner half of the plate. And it loads the bases for Barwick, who's two for two, three. Looks like we'll have a substitution here. Not sure who's coming in yet. Maybe not. There was some discussion. Barwick two for three, fouls that off. That was the 47th batter Madeline Wise has hit in her career. Epps at third, Waller at second, Coe at first with one out. Play has to be to the plate. It's one ball, one strike, one out. Two and one. I'm just sitting here thinking I was off today and I'm off Friday. Why am I going to work tomorrow? Should have made it a five day weekend. Oh well, maybe next year. Two and one with the bases loaded. Grounded to O'Connor, plate at a plate. Moss able to dig it out of the dirt. So Barwick reaches on the fielder's choice. 
Epps is out 6-2 at home. And there's two away. Third base, number three, Alexandra Harris. As the St. Leo faithful anxiously cling to a five-run lead. Bases remain loaded for Hare, who's two for four, and fouls that off. Two singles, two stolen bases, and an RBI. Waller at third, Coe at second, Barwick at first. No balls, one strike, two out, three on. Cut on and missed, and it's 0 and 2. And to my point about the pitching, that run was earned, but the first play of the inning was an error. Which means Epps, who scored, probably doesn't reach on the field his choice. Or Epps is a third, so if the run scores, it'd be unearned. Getting ahead of myself here. It's, it's been too long a day in the sun. Chopped up the middle. Crump tries the backhand. He can't field it. Well, that run's definitely unearned. It's an E4. Now Epps scores, and it's 7-1. And the inning will continue. Check that that was Waller who scored. In for a strike to Williams, who's two for four. No balls, one strike, two out, three on. Back to the circle. Wise over to Parker in time. One run, it was unearned on no hits. Three left on. Saints have one more chance. They go to the bottom of the seventh, down six. No surprise to see Kayla Betts out for the seventh. She started 15 games. She's completed all 15. She'll face four, five, and six, Parker, Smith, and Fry. She struck out 10. She's walked none. One run on three hits. Olivia Parker 0 for 2. Struck out in the first, popped to third, popped to first in the fourth. Popped up. Umpire unintentionally sets a pick, but it's out of play. <laughs> 
Strike one. Just off the corner, one and one. Betts has only had two three ball counts today. A Courtney Robinson pop out and an Abby O'Connor ground out for an RBI. Gets the call on the inside corner. It's one and two. Betts has a chance to win National Pitcher of the Year as she rocks back. Fouls that one back off the screen. Looking to win her fifth straight start and go to 18 and one on the season. That's a grounder. Charging his Waller over to Cream, and there's one away. Mercedes Salinas, the former Immokalee Indian, steps to the plate. Six A player of the year. All Collier County, all county in golf as well. Golf is what I do when I'm not announcing or working. Probably not doing enough of the working part, but doesn't seem like anybody at the office misses me. I mean, I'm going to put in 23 hours this week, though. Salinas just foul. Nice um, effort by Hare there. It's one and one. On the season, Mercedes hitting 217 with an RBI. One ball, one strike, one out, one run, one error for the Saints. Betts blows that one by her. Betts struck out eight in the first three innings. He's struck out just two since, but 10 on the day, 202 on the season. No walks, three hits allowed as Salinas fouls that one off. In a hundred and 27 innings this year. She's allowed just 45 hits and just 18 walks. Hit 10 batters. Down and in, two and two. Good movement, but a little too much movement. Salinas transferred from Florida Gulf Coast. Along with the Saints single season record holder, Kylie Taylor, my cousin Emily plays at Florida Gulf Coast. She's a freshman. We're a softball family. Unfortunately, I, don't, I won't get to see Emily play this year. The only time Gulf Coast comes to this part of the state is they play Stetson, and that is the weekend the Saints host Augusta, the final weekend of the season. And I certainly wouldn't miss senior weekend. For just the third time today, it's a three-ball count. 
This is going to be the eighth pitch of the at bat for Salinas. Cut on and miss, strikeout number 11 for Betts, and the Saints are down to their last out. Now pinch hitter, number 20, Kirsten James. Fraction, number 21. So Kirsten James is going to pinch hit here. Kirsten from Atoa High School in Woodstock, Georgia. She's a freshman. James 176 on the season. Cut on and miss. No balls. One strike, two out to the third hitter this sitting. Kirsten James. And the Saints are down to their last strike. Betts trying to put the finishing touches on her 18th win of the season. Betts will rock back, she hopes, one last time. She fires, cut on and missed. And that's the ball game. Strikeout number 12 for Betts. She goes seven innings, allows one run on three hits. 1-3-1 one, one for the Saints, 7-13-0 for the Lions. Betts goes to 18-1 and one on the season. Jordan Sheets takes the loss. She drops to 6-9. and nine. Game two will be in about 20 to 25 minutes. Your final score in game one, St. Leo seven, Flagler one. Saints lose their ninth in a row, the longest losing streak of the Catherine Grant era. Ties for the second longest losing streak in school history. This is Mike Licio on the Peach Belt Sports Network. We'll be back in just a bit.
So if you are listening and this is still live, game two has been canceled. It's about a three hour trip back for St. Leo. And so if you're looking at a game that would probably end somewhere around 9.30, probably about 1 a.m. before the Lions would return. So they have made the decision along with Coach Catherine Grant that game two will not be played. Saints will be back here on Friday. The Lander Bearcats come to town. So one game, final score 7-1. to one. This is Mike Licio on the Peach Belt Sports Network. I'll see you Friday.